What's going on everyone out there? My name is Jake James Lugo. Welcome to the channel and welcome to this brand new JJ's One Man Podcast. Coming at you live here on YouTube. Hopefully you guys have been enjoying all the videos I've been posting up on the channel as of late. There's a lot of content. Your man here has been busy, like super busy, putting up a ton of videos for you guys to check out, doing a bunch of stuff which we're going to get into in just a bit outside of YouTube. I've been posting up literally daily, every single day over on TikTok, a bunch of gaming and movie and TV show related videos. There's a lot happening, okay? I've been a busy bear over here. But regardless, though, I at least hope that all of you have been enjoying all that content because there is a lot. So show me that you really love it by leaving a comment down below, leaving a like on this episode, making sure that you also subscribe to the channel and follow me on social media. Follow me on Twitter, follow me on TikTok, follow me on Instagram, follow me on threads. I'm literally everywhere, okay? So not only do you have this good podcast content, but you got all that other stuff as well. There's a lot to get into today, a lot of interesting stuff to talk about. But first things first, let's get a little bit of housekeeping out the way. Let's talk a little bit about this right here. So your man, okay, yours truly, is helping guest host an event that's happening down in Miami this week. As of the time I'm recording this podcast, it's actually tomorrow. But it's going to be down in Miami, Florida, Jay Wakefield Brewing. I'm actually going to be getting together with Fan Correct to do a live podcast with a live audience to talk to two Star Wars actors. We got Dimitri Karas and we got Arjashir Radapur, okay, from both The Mandalorian, The Book of Boba Fett, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Ahsoka, as well as also other projects like Avatar, Barbie, and many others. But we're going to talk mainly Star Wars because we're going to be in the Star Wars brewery, which is going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. You guys know I'm a huge Star Wars fan. I'm a huge Star Wars nut, as you can tell by all the videos I've been posting up lately with all the games and other stuff that's been happening. But like I said here, let me show it again so you guys know. It's happening February 29th, 5.30 p.m. to 9 p.m. It's going to be a little bit longer than that, more than likely, because we're probably going to get there a little bit early. We might stay a little bit longer afterwards because they're going to do a meet and greet. I'm going to hang with everybody. We're going to talk Star Wars on the podcast. We'll have the audience there. We might get some questions for the podcast. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to this, and I think that it's going to be pretty dope. So definitely check it out if you're in the area, but don't worry. There's going to be an archive I know that goes up afterwards. So more than likely, you'll be up on the Fan Correct YouTube channel, or he's going to share it on Instagram and everywhere else. Probably TikTok as well, but I'm going to get some stuff. I'll show you guys some behind the scenes things as we're filming it, as we're dealing with everything else. It's going to be fun. So hopefully I get to hang with D uh, Dimitri and Adeshir. I always pronounce his name wrong. Hopefully, hopefully I get to hang out with both of them because I think it's going to be a lot of fun to talk Star Wars because one of them is a big clone trooper nut. Like he actually has like a bunch of armor and stuff because that's what he played on one of the shows. So it should be, should be pretty interesting. Should be pretty interesting. So Anyway, just wanted to get that out the way because that's what's happening this week at the time I'm recording this podcast. If you're watching this afterwards, it's already happened, so be on the lookout for the archive. But let's talk about some gaming stuff, okay? I'm actually going to talk a little bit about some gaming stuff. First things first, as of today from when I'm recording this, uh, Star Wars Dark Forces Remastered actually came out recently. I got a chance to play it on PC and Steam thanks to Night Dive Studios. They actually sent me a copy of the game so you guys could check it out. You could actually see the video of this right now on the channel. It's there for you. As you can see, I watched half of it because I was trying to make sure that it was actually going well and it was actually uh, showing up right. But either way, Dark Forces Remaster. Let's talk a little bit about this game before we move on. Uh, looks good for an older game. That's a classic FPS game that mirrors a lot of stuff going on with classic Doom games or Doom clones. Uh, it's set in the Star Wars universe. It's Star Wars Legends material. It also stars Kyle Katarn, who, if you didn't already know, is one of the characters from the Jedi Knight series. Dark Forces is that very first game in the entirety of the Jedi Knight series because we had Dark Forces, Dark Forces 2 Jedi Knight, then Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast, followed by Jedi Academy. So it's a bunch of different games, but Dark Forces was the first one. It was on PC. It was also on PlayStation 1, which I have the PS1 hard copy, the physical one, which was a little bit different than the one on PC because it actually had extra levels and stuff or exclusive content. But... The remaster is pretty good. We got remixed audio. We got brand new, fresh looking cutscenes, uh, revamped visuals, which is nice. And believe it or not, you could go through both the old and the new visuals and the old and the new stuff at will during the course of the game, which is pretty nice to have that option. They actually did that same thing. If you remember for the Halo Master Chief collection back in the day, they actually had that where you're able to do the same thing. So if you haven't already, definitely go check out my full video. It's about an hour's worth of gameplay impressions and reactions to Dark Forces Remastered. I think it's really cool to see that happen. And it's not the only Star Wars game that's coming very soon because funny enough, while this came out today at the time I'm recording this, in about a couple weeks, 
we got Battlefront Classic Collection coming out. You know, we're going to get some Star Wars Battlefront action going. And I hit up Aspire. I hope that they send me the game on PlayStation so that way I could be able to do a video and talk about it with you guys and be able to play with everybody else. So here's hoping because... Either way, there's a lot of Star Wars game stuff that's happening, and I'm excited. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying Dark Forces Remaster, and I'm definitely going to enjoy all the new stuff that's coming down the line because hopefully we get some more stuff like this. I've been saying for the longest time, certain games that are classic Star Wars titles like Rogue Squadron, Shadows of the Empire, um, what is it, X-Wing TIE Fighter. I would also love to see like uh, Revenge of the Sith, the game get remastered if we could get the phantom menace playstation game remastered there's no reason why we can't get revenge of the sith especially now that we're getting like the 25th or 20th anniversary of the prequels like now's the perfect time for this like if they could somehow either aspire or lucas arts or lucasfilm and anybody else over there could figure that out and make that happen myself and everybody else out here would be very happy fans i'm just saying so let me know your thoughts about Dark Forces Remastered down below in the comment section. Are you going to pick it up on any platform? It's available on PC and Steam. It's available on PlayStation Network, Xbox Arcade, or Xbox Live, I should say, and uh, Nintendo, and I believe also Nintendo Switch, if I'm not mistaken. But it's available in multiple places. You can check it out. I know on PlayStation it has trophy support because, again, we love our trophies over there. Same thing with achievements over on Xbox. So, yeah, definitely check that out when you can. So moving on here, okay, let's talk about some serious stuff, okay, because we got to talk about some serious stuff, some stuff that's been going down the last couple days and actually been going on a little bit longer than that. Let's talk about these layoffs, okay, so we had some layoffs recently, this is Jason Schreier, okay, over at Bloomberg, who's been talking about a lot of this stuff, but this is one of his tweets from, like, I believe it was yesterday, um, he actually talked about how PlayStation laid off about 900 people worldwide, okay, across the world, I should say, and one of the big things that came from that, I'm actually going to show here, okay, was actually that we had a Twisted Metal game that was live ser or had live service stuff to it that was canceled. And they, uh, what is it? it? I think they also uh, laid off a bunch of extra people at Firespread. And I think they closed one other studio or one studio that's related to all this. There's a lot of stuff that's been going down with all these layoffs. A lot of people are losing their jobs. Today, as I was getting ready to record this, we actually had more layoffs that happened over at EA that they laid off a bunch of people. I forgot what the exact number, but it was a lot. And it was a shame because, again, it seems like every, like, day or two or every couple days, there's announcements of big layoffs. I know that they had some stuff not that long ago with Microsoft at Xbox. We had the stuff with PlayStation. We have the stuff with EA. There's been a couple others here and there as well. And it's a shame because I feel like a lot of this is, like, the after effects from, like, the pandemic and a few other things that have been going on in the industry. There's been a lot of bloat all over the place. And you never want to hear about people losing their jobs. But it's just the nature of economics. It's the nature and the ebbs and flows of the business, which sucks. This is like one of the worst things to deal with in any sort of industry, not just the games industry, because film and TV goes through this all the time. Obviously, the, the public sector with like, you know, government jobs every once in a while goes through the same thing. It's just annoying to deal with. But for us, obviously, because we're into games and such, that is always a big problem. Me, myself, as media, I'm always still looking for jobs and, and freelance work and stuff like that. So it doesn't really affect me because I'm not in development. But still, there's a lot of different places, even in media, that are being affected by layoffs, people getting let go, people getting fired, etc. You know, everybody's hurting right now, especially in 2024, right at the start of 2024. You know, coming off from the pandemic, coming off from all the other stuff that's happening in the industry. It's a lot to deal with. And... This is one of those side effects that we all just got to, you know, just walk it off at some point. And nobody likes to hear that, especially when it comes to their jobs through their means of living and their livelihood. But it's the reality that we have to deal with. But let me know some of your thoughts about all the layoffs happening at PlayStation, EA, and everywhere else in the industry down below in the comment section. Do you think that there should be other stuff that should be done better to help people retain their jobs so that way there's not like these huge layoffs? Do you think there's other stuff that can be done outside of the companies themselves? Because one of the easiest things that people could point to when it comes to stuff like this is, uh, what is it, P uh, customers buying more games or spending money more on games. You know, a lot of people go back and forth with the live service stuff. This is one of the things that I felt with this whole firing, it was a little bit of a blessing in disguise because I'm not a huge fan of live service games. You know, with the Twisted Metal game being canceled, it was in development at that studio. Uh, we're not going to get that, obviously. But this has been a thing where other different studios have been trying to go to for a while now. There's like multiple games. I think also there was one other game, I believe, I think it was at Sega. 
Actually, no, now that, now that I remember, this had been going around for a while. Sega had been thinking about, or at least there was talk, about them implementing live service elements to games like Crazy Taxi, the reboot that's coming out, and Jet Set Radio. I remember, I think I was listening to Defining Duke's podcast, uh, the guys over there, Maddie and Cog, and they were talking about this, and they were like, yo, like, that's a game that doesn't need this stuff. Like, why would they do this? And I think that the main reason is because every company right now is really hurting, and they're trying to find different ways to make this work to get generate a little bit more income and try to stabilize the ship if you will and it sucks to, to have to see stuff like that and have to deal with stuff like that but you know we'll see what happens over the next couple months hopefully fingers crossed we don't hear about any more layoffs anymore because again it sucks it's, it's not a good thing to see people lose their jobs it's it's one of the worst things that could possibly happen is people losing their jobs it's just a damn shame regardless regardless of the scenario i should say so moving on from there going to talk a bit about some other crazy stuff now let me preface this by saying uh i like jeff Keeley. i i think i'm cool with jeff Keeley. i've met jeff Keeley. i've had the privilege of meeting him and talking with him a few times over the years he's been nothing but nice to me same thing with a lot of other people in the industry who i've had the privilege or at least the opportunity to just talk with them just randomly whether it was at e3 at pax or some other event like comic-con or whatever else you know we've crossed paths at some point or another so today before I recorded this podcast, I see on Twitter and on social media that Jeff is actually trending. I'm like, what the hell happened to Jeff? Like, what did Jeff Keeley do? Because the Jeff is Jeff Keeley is the only Jeff that we all know in the industry. Like, when I see Jeff, I immediately think of Jeff Keeley. I'm like, maybe he's talking about something with the Game Awards. Maybe it's something else that whatever's going on. And I look on the trending page on Twitter, and everybody's pissed at Jeff Keeley. I'm like, what the hell did I miss? I feel like I missed a whole episode or a season or something. Like, everybody's just mad at him. Like, what what the hell did Jeff do? So I go to look at his uh, tweets, and he's over here tweeting about some random piece of tech that uses AI to generate, like, sense from your games. And it's like, this is stupid. Like, I mean, I get it. He's, like, talking about some random thing that might be cutting edge or might be different or whatever. But this is weird. I even put a tweet below his tweet. Saying like, yeah, this is kind of weird and I would rather not smell burning smoke or fire or anything like this or napalm, God forbid, while I'm playing my video games. <coughs> Coughing there because I'm talking so much. I would rather not smell that type of stuff, especially if I'm playing my games. Got me thinking, going crazy that something's wrong with my setup. Like, God forbid, right? Because we all know, like, when you play a long time and all of a sudden you start to smell something like it's burning or something's getting toasty, you start to freak out like, oh, my God, my console's burning to the ground. Or, God forbid, the electrical outlet's going out or something crazy is happening. Like, you don't want that. <laughs> Nobody wants that type of stuff. So I was looking at this and it's like, no, that's not really the only reason why he was trending there. And as stupid as that might have actually have been, again, I'm just showing the tweet just for context. Again, it's pretty stupid, whatever else. But I go scroll down and I look at everybody's tweets and everybody kind of like talking to him. And it's a lot more than that. You see, for whatever reason, at the time, before I really saw everything else, a lot of people were just mad at Jeff Keighley and really dogpiling him because they wanted him to talk about the layoffs that have been happening recently. Now, if you don't know, Ever since like this past year's Game Awards, and I think the one the year before that, if I'm not mistaken, there was a lot of stuff that's been going on since then in between the different shows. And every once in a while, you'll get like these different waves of people on social media that want Jeff Keighley to speak on something. Like again, in this case, being the layoffs that have been happening so regularly. Uh, the other thing beforehand, which I believe was at this past Game Awards show, people wanted him to speak about the Israel and Palestine conflict. And again. However you feel about all these different issues, the point is, is that that was a show that was going on and people wanted him to speak on it. But I understood at the time watching the Game Awards why he necessarily wouldn't make a whole big deal about it because he's trying to run an award show. He's trying to sell a show. There's all these different companies that want the focus to be on the games and everything else, the awards, rather than everything else going on outside. And I got that. You don't have to agree with that you know, or agree with his approach, but there's an understanding there. Okay, because obviously he's doing this other stuff. He's not getting involved in the conversation with all this stuff. But in the past, in all fairness, if we're going to be honest and fair here, in the past, Jeff has gone on stage and talked about different things, including when all that stuff was happening in the industry at Ubisoft, at Activision, with some of those people getting let go and some of those people getting caught and exposed for doing some really messed up stuff. We all know what I'm talking about. I can't really say it on YouTube, but we all know what was happening back in the day. 
And a lot of that stuff was going on. And he finally got on stage during one of the shows and spoke about it. He had like a, a couple lines about it during his monologue, which everybody was applauding. And it's, it is what it is. But lately, Jeff hasn't really been talking like that. The last couple of shows, he's been very kind of quiet on a lot of these issues. And agree or disagree, you know, you could feel whatever way, but that's what he's decided to do. Okay. Unfortunately, we got some other random stuff that people are putting on here. But yeah. And he's been doing stuff like this. So a lot of people got upset at him for tweeting this out and actually uh, not speaking about all this other stuff. But come to find out, really the big issue, I guess you could say is the catalyst of all this, was this article by Kirk McKinnon. I hope I pronounced it. Kirk McKinnon. Or or Kirk McKinnon. Yeah, I think it's McKinnon or like that. But either way, Kirk here, okay? Now I should say, for context and full disclosure... I've come across Kirk in the past. We've actually played Destiny 2 together when the game first came out. We haven't really talked a whole lot. We haven't really had a lot of time like conversing with each other other than that context of that game. But I've had no problem with Kirk and I've had no issue with Kirk and I never really, you know, might disagree with a couple things here and there, but nothing like crazy enough to, to be beef or to be nonsense or whatever else, okay? So with everything that I say now, I say as far as just being focused on the bigger conversation here and the bigger issue that I took you know, with all this stuff that's going on, which we'll get into in just a second, okay? So Kirk, for you all to see, he wrote an article on his website, okay, about Jeff Keighley, okay, specifically about Jeff Keighley, and it was titled, The Games Industry Deserves a Better Spokesperson Than Jeff Keighley. And he put out this tweet, again, saying that he was annoyed, and he wanted to put this out there. And going to the article itself, so I could show you guys here, let me make sure that I can move myself around so you guys could see it, okay? This entire article, okay, let me go to the top, there's the title and everything. It's from video game. It's from video games. I, I dot SI or sports illustrated. Uh, he's basically pretty much doing an entire article, which I feel after reading through it is basically one jab at, after another at Jeff Keeley because he decided not to speak about some of the issues going on. Or in this case, really what Kirk focuses on is all the layoffs. Okay. So PC gamer created a visual chart where there's been 16,000 layoffs across the games industry, which is everybody. That's everything that's been happening so far. But the issue is, is that he's really kind of like taking Jeff to task or really dogpiling and harping on him because he feels like Jeff, because of his uh, connections in the industry, because of his quote unquote influence, that he should be taking the time to speak about things like this and make a statement and stuff. And I think that's unfair. You know, after reading through his article and seeing everything in its context, the reason why I think that's unfair is because it's not Jeff's job to comment on everything going on within the industry, good or bad, whatever the case might be. Jeff Keighley runs multiple shows throughout the year. He runs the Game Awards, Summer Game Fest, and I think also Video Games Live or Games Live over at Gamescom, I believe it is. Not, yeah, game, I think it's Gamescom over in Germany because that was one of the last shows I saw him hosting on stage. But he does like different shows like that. That's his job, you know, to host these different events and get everybody excited and talking about video games, especially trying to push games into the, to the, the general public and to the limelight, you know, with pop culture and stuff. That's really his job. He's not here or not around to be commenting on every single issue that everybody feels passionate about. And sometimes, and and we'll get into a couple tweets that mention this in just a bit, there's some times where I feel like people in the industry on all sides get too caught up on the echo chamber and get too caught up on the discourse that happens exclusively on Twitter most of the time, or really social media, but really Twitter in this case where everybody just gets caught up on that and they don't seem to see everything else outside of it, okay? They only see the echo chamber and the people that are talking about or feel the very same as they do and they react or act in whatever way that they do. So with this, with this article going back to it, after reading through it, it just felt very mean-spirited because, again, you go through this stuff and it's like, you know, he harps on his tweets, you know, which is the one we took a look at before, He harps on other stuff about him hosting these shows and how he's always put into the limelight, into the spotlight, you know, of the games industry. Uh, He he mentions a little bit about Summer Game Fest and about how E3 has gone away, you know, and all these other different things. So, quote from Kirk's uh, article, all the big developer, okay, whoops, let me go back a little further. Even writing this piece is a risk for me. With the death of E3, Jeff Keighley's Summer Game Fest has emerged as the only major competitor to Gamescom. All the big developers are there, all the preview opportunities, all the things I need as a journalist to do my job. In criticizing Keighley, I'm potentially jeopardizing my chances of ever being invited again. So Jeff, I ask you as someone else who loves this industry who could put your neck on the line in the same way. Or can you put your neck on the line, uh, was it, on the line in the same way? That burning in your nostril isn't the gamer scent. Wake up and smell the napalm. 
And I don't think that's fair. I don't think that's honestly fair. Like a lot of his criticisms going through it, I'm trying to find a really good one. Like, like, here we go. Keeley has the largest microphone in the industry, but he refuses to do anything that could potentially jeopardize his bottom line. Sure, a tweet from Keeley wouldn't stop the games industry layoffs, but it would shine a light on the sorry state the industry is in rather than pretending games are better than ever. Okay, he could be reposting job openings and signal boosting developers. As the most influential person in the industry, he could do something. And that's where I feel like that's not fair because number one, you're not his boss to say what he should or should not be doing. Just like he's not the same thing towards you or anybody else should be doing that. Okay, it's one thing to say that like if you were in that position, you would be doing that. But to kind of like judge a person, anybody, whether it's Jeff, me, uh, Kirk or anybody else to judge them because you feel they should be doing something else. That's not right. And again, it's not Jeff's job in the industry. Okay. Or in the games community to be that. Okay. A lot of people are constantly going to different personalities in uh, places like Twitter or on YouTube and really trying to look at them as like specific figureheads for different issues or different topics or different parts of gaming. And while that's okay to be a fan of them, I feel like sometimes people take it a step way too far because asking Jeff to be part of the conversation about something is not the same as what Kirk is doing here, at least in my personal opinion. What Kirk is doing here in this case with this article, it feels like he's jabbing at the dude and kind of like dogpiling on him or causing people to dogpile on him because he feels that he's not doing what he needs to do with his, with his platform. And it's like, it's not your platform, Kirk. Like it's not anybody else's platform, but Jeff's and Jeff, I'm pretty sure like, let's, let's be all fair right here. Okay. Let's be honest with ourselves. I'm pretty sure Jeff has some feelings about all the stuff that's been going on with all the stuff with the layoffs or anything else outside of that. And I'm pretty sure he has like thoughts that maybe he wants to share. Or maybe he could have shared at some point, or maybe he could actually be going around and giving some encouragement to people, but that's at Jeff's discretion. Like he doesn't need to do that. Just like he doesn't need to host the game awards or any of these other events or host any other stuff like what he did at E3. He doesn't need to do all that stuff. Okay. Now, as far as his job and as far as what he does as a business, you know, with the game awards or anything else, if he feels like he doesn't need to talk about that or he doesn't want to talk about that at that time, who are we anywhere else to really comment on that or really to say like, no, you should be doing this because this, this, and this is happening. It feels like more that you want him to talk about stuff because of your specific group of people that are talking about stuff rather than seeing what Jeff wants to talk about. And there's one big thing that could solve all of this, which I did not see in Kirk's uh, article. I even went through this a couple of times, like just to see what's up. And he talks about that. He's spoken to Jeff in other uh, instances that he's talked with him. But the one thing that Kirk has not done in this article was reach out to Jeff for comment. Like, I, I'm not even kidding. Like, I went through this entire thing. Try to see, like, if uh, Jeff actually reached out. I mean, uh, not Jeff. Uh, was it Kirk actually reached out to Jeff for comment or to get a statement or anything else like that? None of that is here. This is just an article that Kirk wrote up and apparently wrote up because he was pissed off. Like, again, like, look, look, this is by his own words. Okay. He said that he woke up still annoyed. So here's why we deserve a better spokesperson than Jeff Keighley. This feels bitter. This feels unnecessary. This feels very like almost like an attack on a person or like a, a character assassination for the sake of just doing that with no real kind of like instructive merit or, or any sort of like opportunity for everybody to really walk away with something other than that you feel a certain way about Jeff Keighley. And this is why, and this is like, he should be doing this and he's not doing it. It's like, I don't understand the point of this. I don't understand the relevance of this. Like, it's one thing to ask him to be part of the conversation. It's another thing to take a jab at a person, which is what I feel this is doing. And all that could be easily solved if you would have just reached out to Jeff. Like, if this was that much of a big deal, right, with your feelings, okay, like, you know, talking to Kirk or anybody else, if it was that much of a big deal, why not go to Jeff Keighley and ask like, hey, why don't you come on our podcast and why don't you come over here, talk with me for a bit because I'm writing an article about this stuff and I want to get your perspective because you haven't really talked about this. You know, that would solve a lot of things. Now, in the interest of fairness, if Kirk did that and Jeff was like, nah, I'm good or he didn't respond, then it is what it is. But I don't get any sort of like, you know, thing from that based on the article that I read, let alone any of the tweets that I've seen from Kirk over the last like day. Okay, so again, like I'm going through the replies. This is Kirk's original tweet. I'm going through the replies, it seems just like a bunch of people just dogpiling on Jeff, like not even giving him the benefit of the doubt. 
Like, I understand you might not like the, the, the tweets that the guy is putting out there, but it's also his platform. And again, if he doesn't feel like talking about something, you're not going to force somebody to speak on something. This is a big problem with a lot of big issues, especially like really like, you know, important issues that get talked about on Twitter. Because if you're talking about something, you're doing wrong. If you're not talking about something for whatever reason, good or bad, then you're doing wrong and you, everybody judges you. And it's like, hold on a second. Like, can we like not like personally attack Jeff Keeley if he hasn't commented on something? If he hasn't really talked about something or if he hasn't felt the need or, or the desire to speak on something, because where was that same energy towards other people with other issues? You know what I mean? And if you don't know what I'm talking about, just to be real with everybody, again, in the interest of fairness, some of these same people that are dogpiling on Jeff in these threads on Twitter are some of the same people that were mad quiet when stuff went down with the IGDA and Jennifer Shrule a while back. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go around and look around about it and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Some of those same people will be mad quiet, suspiciously, about an issue like that, but are willing to jump on Jeff Keighley for something like this. It's like, come on now. Come on now. Like, are we really going to do this to somebody, whether it's Jeff or anybody else? To me, the way that I look at all this, it doesn't seem right. It doesn't seem fair, you know, to Jeff or to anybody else. It just doesn't seem right. Now, when I go through some of the other tweets and stuff here. Like I looked at some of the quote tweets and I see a couple other people in the industry. A lot of people are really just like agreeing with uh with Kirk and like really again just dogpiling on Jeff Keeley, it seems like. But then you got a couple others that take a different position, and some of them have been catching flack for it. So here's one with Nick Calandra. Okay. Do people genuinely think Jeff Keeley, Jeff is a spokesperson for the industry? Legitimately asking because outside of the game awards, he doesn't really provide his thoughts in any form on the industry anymore we see him twice a year as a host at gamescom and tga that's it and then he follows up by the way over in this tweet here which i'll show you guys uh jeff saying jeff keely saying something would literally change nothing the fact people are trying to dogpile him for not saying something is stupid and performative outrage be mad at the corporate companies putting profit over people keely can't change a thing about that which is 100 percent true Okay. And I seen a couple other people and I saw this original tweet, by the way, that, that, uh, Nick is actually screenshotting. He didn't put the person there, but I know who it is. And, um, he's a hundred percent right. And even like looking at some of the responses, like some people are disagreeing with him or coming at him. I saw a couple other like quote tweets, just taking a jab at Nick. And I was like, this is so unnecessary because he's right. Like who is anybody right now? That is not Jeff Keighley's boss. That doesn't pay his paychecks to tell him what he should or should not be talking about on his platform. And you can say that about anybody, but like this whole idea of like figureheads or people putting this like weight on people because they feel like they should be speaking on what they want to hear about is not right. It's not fair. I mean, going back to some of these other tweets and these quote tweets, there's a couple others in here. Another one by Destin Legary. Okay. Destin goes, I think Jeff Keighley's tweet about the smell device was terribly timed and the layoffs are awful, which is both true. But I also think we need to stop demanding people tweet or act in a way on that Twitter has deemed to be correct. Kirk has a piece about Jeff Keighley for context. Yeah, it's, you know, it's just highlighting the stuff that was already put out there. But yeah, Destin is right. Destin is 100% right. It's just, it really comes down to just some people feel a personal way about this stuff. And because they're mad that Jeff hasn't talked about this or said or echoed some of the same things that they feel, that's why they're doing this. And I don't think that's right. I don't think that's fair. I don't think Jeff has really done anything to deserve that. You could like or dislike Jeff Keighley. You could like or dislike the Game Awards or Summer Game Fest or anything else that he's done up to this point. Again, over the, what, 10, 20 years that he's been part of the industry? He's been, he's been around a long time, in all, in all fairness. But the point is, is like you could disagree with whatever it is that he does or you not like whatever it is that he does. But we all can like come to some sort of consensus like this is a little unnecessary to be throwing at him like that or to be putting on him like that. Because you could say the same thing about any other person that you look at as a figurehead within the industry, you know, as someone that might be a YouTuber, a content creator, streamer, uh, a PR person, you know, somebody with a large social media, file, whatever, influencer, whatever you want to call it and stuff. I just don't think like this is necessary. I just don't think that it's right. I don't think that it really does anything. Dogpiling on Jeff Keighley is not going to solve the issue of all these different stuff, these layoffs that are happening at all these companies. If people are really passionate about that, I think that it's much more better use of energy and better use of rage to not only assist the people that are losing their jobs, which is like probably should be at the forefront of people's minds, but also taking the tasks, the companies that are doing this stuff and really trying to get to the root issue of why this is happening. If you're mad about the PlayStation layoffs, go take that up with PlayStation. If you're mad about the EA layoffs, go take it up with EA. Like, I don't see what the problem is. Don't buy their games 
you know, at some point, which again, does have an adverse effect because you might be causing more damage and stuff. But the point is, is like you could do something a little bit better and more productive to remedy a lot of these issues or make things a little bit better than dogpiling on Jeff Keighley for not talking about something. Again, you know, read the article from Kirk if you want to. Here's again the actual article so you guys can see it. It's over on Video Games at Sports Illustrated, but he's, it's also on his, uh, what is it, on his Twitter. You could actually go find it. Judge for yourself. You know, I encourage you to check it out yourself and actually come to your own conclusion besides what you might hear from me or anybody else because I feel like there's a lot of like layers to this and a lot of different things that are going on that I feel like are just, again, like pretty wild. Like, uh, look, even, even like some of this stuff, like look at this. Like some of these tweets, you know, of people just sharing stuff of just jabbing at Jeff Keighley outside of the ones I just showed you, but like other stuff saying that they agree with the article and just taking a jab at Jeff or just dumping on his name and like, again, character assassinating him. It just, it makes no sense to me. It is absolutely unnecessary and stupid, but I digress though. Those are just my thoughts on the whole ordeal. I know it's very complex and it's a lot of stuff, but let me know some of your thoughts about all this down below in the comment section. Do you agree or disagree with me? Do you agree with anything that was said in the article? If you've gotten a chance to read it or what anybody else has been saying on social media, tell me about that stuff down below in the comment section. So final topic to get into because we have to talk about this. It's a big deal right now. It's happening tomorrow. As of the timing of this podcast, as of the recording of it, tomorrow is Final Fantasy VII Rebirth time. That's right. It's going down. It's going down tomorrow because we got a brand new Final Fantasy VII game, the sequel to Final Fantasy VII Remake. I'm excited about this. I'm hyped. I cannot wait for this stuff. It's going to be ridiculous. I already got my copy pre-ordered. I'm ready to go on PlayStation 5. I cannot wait. Now, funny enough, I'm getting a physical copy of the game because I want to get the, the hard copy of it. I'm not going to get the digital because even though I know I could play directly at midnight and I could preload the game, I'm fine just waiting to get my physical copy the next day because I want to add it to my collection. I want to play the game comfortably and just be hyped. Now, unfortunately for me, because tomorrow I'm going to Miami for the Star Wars live podcast event, I only have like the day time to play it. But once I get home, after daddy comes home from work, it is over, okay? I'm staying up all night to play Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I've been waiting on this for a while, so I'm excited. But either way, uh, again, this is the next game in the series. Uh, a lot of people are looking forward to it because it's taking the Final Fantasy VII story in a really, really wild direction with some of the stuff that happened at the end of the previous game. But also, just the after playing that demo, if you never got a chance to see my gameplay impressions of the demo... There was the demo that came out for this game. There was two. There was one that was the flashback, and then there was one that's actually the exploration of the world when you're going to Junon. And I loved it. I was having a lot of fun playing it. It looked dope. Uh, the, the visuals look fantastic. The presentation is awesome. The music is incredible. The gameplay feels good. It's exactly what we wanted and what we liked about Final Fantasy VII Remake. Just tweaked a little bit with some extra tools and other stuff that you get to do. And there's a lot of good in here. There's a lot of good in here, and I'm just like, I'm so hyped. I'm so hyped up to play this. And then we're going to be able to see all our favorite characters. We're getting uh, the crew together. We're getting Yuffie. We're getting everybody. We're going to get Sid. Oh, man, it's going to be so good. It's going to be so damn good. So I cannot wait to play this. I will be doing a gameplay impressions of the final game, you know, like the final release. Once I have it in hand, I'm going to play it alone, just in solitude, a little bit further. And then afterwards, I'll do like one of my JJ's first look or JJ's first 30 type of videos where we could actually talk about the specifics of the gameplay and just showcase it, give some reactions and have some fun with that stuff. Because like all of you out there, I'm hyped up about this. But let me know some of your thoughts about Final Fantasy VII Rebirth down below in the comments section. Are you getting the game on PlayStation 5? Are you going to pick it up day one? Are you going to wait a little bit for the weekend to pick it up? Because that's what I'm playing through the weekend. Like tonight, I'm going to waste time playing Dark Forces Remastered. I'm going to chill with that on Steam. But then come tomorrow, okay, this is a Final Fantasy VII household after that. <laughs> and then that's going to last from now, or at least tomorrow, until March 14th, where the household becomes a Battlefront household. Because <laughs> then we got Battlefront Classic Collection, and it's going to go down with that. I cannot wait. That's going to be dope, because it's 64 players online on PlayStation 5 with trophy support. I'm like, oh, I'm ready. I'm ready for this. Again, there's a lot of great things happening. So, like I said, let me know some of your thoughts about all this down below in the comments. And those are all the topics that I got for you guys. Uh, don't forget to leave a like on this video on this episode of the podcast. Make sure you guys are subscribed to me as well. Subscribe to the channel for more podcast episodes, more gameplay videos like I just put up. Again, let me show you guys real quickly all the new content that we've had going up on the channel. There's been a lot, man. 
There's been a ridiculous amount of stuff. Here, let me put it right here for you. Put it right here for you, okay? Look at all these videos right now, okay? Look, we got Dark Forces Remastered. We got a brand new Slave Zero X. We got a video that I did of my Battlefront Classic Memories talking about 20 years or the 20th anniversary of Star Wars Battlefront. We got Geometry Survivor. We got the demo, like I just mentioned, for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. We got Dead Cells. There's so much going on right now that you need to be checking out. Like, look at this. Look at all this content, son. Look at all this content. It's ridiculous. There's so much in here. There's so much goodness. Like, look at that. Look at that Dark Forces gameplay. It's so good. But anyway, just wanted to show you guys that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode and I hope that you've been enjoying the podcast as we've gone along. I know I've been slacking a little bit as far as getting the episodes out early enough, but again, as you can tell, I've been busy doing a lot of stuff and putting out a lot of content for all of you out there. Like I mentioned before, don't forget that I'm definitely going to be down in Miami uh, at the Jay Wakefield Brewery uh, tomorrow at the time I'm recording this, which is also going to be, um, was it? it's also going to be uh, for February 29th. I'm going to show you guys the tweet again. Or the actual image that actually has been posted around. This is the official uh, promo for it. So you guys could see again, Jay week field, February 29th. Uh, was it going to be talking star Wars with two star Wars actors, live audience, live Q and a meet and greet. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be super star Wars that day. There might be star Wars drinks for all I know. Cause I know they got star Wars drinks there at the brewery, but anyway, I will talk to you guys again very soon. Peace out and stay epic everybody. This channel is sponsored by Flynn's Arcade and More, located in Margate, Florida. Flynn's is one of the premier spots for gaming fans in South Florida. They have a variety of arcade games on cabinet for you to play throughout the week, including all of your beloved classics. You could also play a ton of new and current console games too, on PlayStation, Xbox, and Nintendo consoles. Grab a snack or drink and enjoy the best gaming experience you'll find. Visit during one of their many big events to connect with the gaming community in South Florida. Want to test your skills in competitive fighting games? Join any of the weekly tournaments that happen at Flynn's for a chance for some cool prizes. And if you're into tabletop gaming or model kit building, there's a bunch of events there for you too. Swing by Flynn's Arcade and More, located in Margate Boulevard in Margate, Florida. You won't find a better spot than Flynn's.